Chapter 16 Meet the Little Prince This is an extract from the famous book The Little Prince It is about the narrator and how he describes his thoughts his uh, experience and how he meets the little prince Once when I was 6 years old I saw a magnificent picture in a book called True Stories from Nature It was a picture of a boa constrictor. So this boy, this author, uh, the narrator of the story, says that he, once when he was six years old, he saw a very beautiful and a great picture of a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor is a large brown snake that crushes the animal, whichever it wants its prey, to eat, and then it squeezes them to death. their whole body with its with its own body and then starts swallowing it little by little it is found in central and southern south america okay so let's continue so in this there was a picture of a boa constrictor in the act of swallowing an animal in the book it said boa constrictors swallow their prey whole without without chewing it so they full full animal whatever they whatever they whatever which animal whichever animal is their prey they swallow it whole and after that they are not able to move because of course the animal maybe if the animal is big the, the that snake is not able to move and they sleep through the 6 months that they need to for digestion so after swallowing the prey the boa constrictor would sleep for 6 months till the time it would digest the full animal after some work with a colored pencil i succeeded in making my first drawing that is he's at 6 years old at that time the of the narrator says that he is able to his he makes his first drawing my drawing number 1 it looked like this you can see the picture there so his drawing number 1 looked like the picture which is given in the book i showed my masterpiece masterpiece means the lovely drawing perfect drawing that he has made he says i showed my masterpiece to the grown ups that is the big people and asked them whether the drawing frightened them and but they answered frightened why should anyone be frightened by a hat now the drawing look like a hat so they said why should anyone be frightened by a hat my drawing was not a picture of hat the narrator is saying it's not a picture of hat it was a picture of a boa constrictor digesting the an elephant he says that he had made a picture of a uh, boa constrictor digesting the elephant but since the grown ups were not able to understand it i made another drawing i drew the inside of the boa constrictor so that the grown ups could see it clearly he says he again drew another picture in of the inside of the boa constrictor so that the uh, grown up people the elderly people of his house could see what he had drawn My drawing number two looked like this. So the picture of the drawing number two is also given in front. The grown-ups respond. Response: This time was to advise me to lay aside my drawing of boa constrictions, constrictors, and devote myself instead to geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar. So when he drew the drawing number two of the elephant inside the boa constrictor, his grown ups decide told him please leave this and start studying that is why i gave up what might have been a magnificent career as a painter he says that is the time he gave up his great career of a painter grown ups never understand anything by themselves he say the elder the adult people they don't understand anything by themselves So then I learned to pilot airplanes. He started he became a 
pilot. I had have flown a little all over parts of the world, all parts of the world, so many parts of the world he had flown. In the course of this life, I have had many encounters or he has met many people, many great people, many people. I have seen them intimately. That means he's seen them very closely and that hasn't much improved my opinion of them. He's not. His opinion for them is the same. Whenever I met anyone who seemed to me at all clear headed, clear sighted, that means who would be he felt was a little wise person, I showed him my drawing number one to find out if this was the person of true understanding. So he, if he felt that the person was intelligent enough, he would show him drawing number one to check if he had real understanding. But whoever it was would always say this that's a hat now it looked like a hat so everyone would say it's a hat so then i'd never talk to that person about bow constrictors or forests or stars he said then to those people who would say it is a hat i would never talk to them about bow constrictors or the forests or the stars or anything I'd bring myself down to his level. Now he's saying that he would, the narrator would bring down himself to that level of the person. I'd talk to him about bridge, golf, politics and neckties. They'd be greatly pleased to have met such a sensible person. So those people after talking to him would feel very happy to meet a person sensible like him. So I lived my life alone without anyone that I could really talk to until I had an accident with my plane in the desert of Sahara six years ago. So he lived alone, he said, he didn't have anyone really to talk to till the time he found he met with an accident in the Sahara desert six years ago. Something was broken in my engine. And as I had with me neither a machine, neither a mechanic, nor any passengers, I set myself to attempt the difficult repairs all alone. He tried. He, there, was, there were no passengers with him and there were no mechanics with him. So he tried to do the repairing himself. It was a question of life or death for me. The first night then, I went to sleep on the sand, a thousand miles from all human habitation. He says, the first it was very difficult for him to survive there in the desert and he had to sleep alone, all alone, away from the humanity in the desert on the sand. Thus, you can imagine my amazement at sunset when I was awakened by an odd little voice. It said, if you please draw me a sheep. He says, then after because there were no other human beings around, he says that it were, I was really amazed when in the sunset, at the sunrise, sorry, in the morning, when he was woken up by a small little voice, odd little voice, and who just asked him that if he could draw a sheep. What? Draw me a sheep. I jumped to my feet, completely thunderstruck. He said I was really surprised as I woke up to hear this that someone is asking me to draw a sheep. I saw a most extraordinary small person. That means he saw a very small person, or maybe a small child, who stood there examining me with great seriousness. There was this child standing in front of him who was trying to understand who this person was. Here you may see the best portrait that later I was able to make of him. He was a very cute little person that he looked and he understood the narrator. But my drawing is certainly very much less charming than its model. So here he draws another picture. He's saying that the little person looked like the picture that is given here. And he says that my drawing is very 
less charming or very less interesting than the real person that is standing in front of him that however is not my fault he says it's not my fault whatever the, his drawing is not as good as the real person the grown ups discourage me in my painter's career he says that is not his fault it is the grown up people whose fault it is that his drawing is not very impressive because they discouraged him now all the blame is going on to the grown up people because they did not encourage him to be a painter now i stared at this sudden apparition apparition is appearance of the person with my eyes fairly stared starting out of my head of aston out of astonishment he is surprised to see this child when at last i was able to speak i said to him but what are you doing here he told the narrator told this child what are you doing here he says if again he says the same thing if you please draw me a sheep he answered he again said draw me a sheep when a mystery is too overpowering one dare not disobey he says that when something becomes any mystery becomes very big huge you should not disobey what that person or anything is happening absurd absurd because it was very strange as it might seem to me i took out my pocket of a sheet of a sheet of paper and my fountain pen i told the little chap that i did not know how to draw he said he took out a sheet of paper and a fountain pen which he had and he but he told the child that he did not know how to draw a sheet that doesn't matter just draw me a sheep he said he said i don't doesn't matter if you don't know how to draw just draw a sheep or whatever you know but i had never drawn a sheep he says but i had not never, never ever drawn a sheep so i drew for him one of the two pictures i had drawn so often that is of the bow constrictor it was that of the bow constrictor from the outside and i was astonished to hear the little fellow say no 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 i do not want an elephant inside a bow constrictor a bow constrictor is a very dangerous creature and an elephant is very cumbersome very difficult to handle where i live everything is very small draw me a sheep again the child when this man draws the bow constrictor uh he had drawn all already he showed him he says the child recognized what which looked like a hat to everyone else this child recognizes that it is a bow constrictor with an elephant inside it and uh, trying to digest it and he says no 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 i don't want a bow constrictor they are very very dangerous creatures and these elephants are very difficult to handle because they are very big and bulky animals and he says again that where i live is a very small place so just draw me a simple sheep because other animals are very big and dangerous so then i made a drawing the narrator says then finally he made a drawing he looked at it carefully and said no the sheep is already very sickly he says after so you can see the picture of the drawing which the narrator made and he looked at this first picture which he made and he says it's looking very sickly very sick make me another so then i did my drawing over once more again the narrator draw another drawing but it was rejected too just like the others he said the now another drawing which he drew of the uh, she this little boy he again rejected it he said he didn't like it by this time my patience was exhausted he was narrator was very tired now he was like he was very his patience was going away and because i was in a hurry to start taking my engine up, apart now he was in a hurry to again make repair his engine so i tossed off this drawing he threw off he, he made another drawing you can see a small box and then i threw out an explanation with it he said an explanation also along with it this is only his box the sheep you 
asked for is inside it. He said, "This is just like this is a very small box. The sheep which you are asking for is inside the box." I was very surprised to see a light break over the face of this of my young judge. He says he was very surprised to see this little boy face lit up with excitement. That's exactly the way I wanted wanted it. This little boy says that this is exactly what I wanted. This he looks at this drawing. Do you think that this sheep will have to have a greater deal of grass? And after that, after appreciating that this is exactly what the drawing he wanted, he asks the narrator, the child asks the narrator, "Do you think the sheep will need a lot of grass to eat? Why? Because where I live, everything is very little." He says again, "Where I live is everything is very little, very small. There will surely be enough grass for him," I said. Then the narrator said, "There will definitely be enough grass for the sheep which is in the box," and that is how I made the acquaintance of the little prince. He was that is how he was able to meet the little prince, who came from a little small place, with, and he wanted a very small sheep, and he was the one he says was able to recognize. this narrator's drawing of the bow constrictor and what he meant by it so in the eyes of the narrator he was the little prince that he met